crypto Feronis. <laughs> I, I just jumped in. I was still hearing the intro on my end, and then I, I was able to uh, just hear <laughs> the new nickname you gave me. But apparently I need to get on crypto.com uh, in, instead of Robinhood so I get access to a lot of these uh, these really yeah. good ones that, that, that you're finding and, and you're naming. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you can't do anything on Robinhood, bro. No, 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 no. Yeah, you need a, you need to get a real account. And I think uh, I think Polly hit a dollar, by the way. So H bar yeah, hit yeah. ten cents. I, 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 I told you, bro. I'm just you know, you know. I've been on H bar since it was at four cents. So right now at ten, dude. I'm like killing it in a half right now, and it's just like starting, like just starting. Like I expect H bar to be at maybe 40, 50 cents when it's all said and done. So I still expect it a four or five time from where it's at right now. That's just me. I'm not a financial advisor, of course. <laughs> always, always, got, always got to preface it with that, of course. Always, because you know, I just uh, you know, I just you know, I can't tell you anything about Jasmine since it's up twenty percent today. You know, I, I I can't do these things, you know. So I just you know, I just gotta move on. You know, this was at 0.33. Now it's at 0.80 of a cent. So, you know, I can only guide you to, you know, you can only lead a horse to water. It's up to the horse to start drinking. After that, you know, it, it, it's up to you. All right. So is Ronnie Bradford the answer for our yeah. special teams coach? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I was pretty certain I'd come on the program and then I'd hear uh, Danny Crossman's name here, but but you want me to say it, so um, yeah. Well, so uh, change it uh, for uh, with an assistant special teams coach. So not I know a lot of Dolphins fans want to see uh, the the change at the special teams coordinator position, Danny Crossman, but uh, it seems like it's another off season where uh, that is uh, where he's being retained uh, as we just go through uh, just time where uh, nothing changes uh with that position so i got i got to get into that building and find out what i have have you been able to find out or explain what was the decision like th what is it that they don't see wrong with danny crossman that we see wrong all the time because that that, that to me is like that's one of the mysteries of, of the world right now i mean when we talk about earth and things that you need to like answer and wonder about one of them is how is danny crossman still with the miami dolphins i mean that is one of earth's mysteries right now yeah we haven't had access to mike mcdaniel since uh really uh the end of season press conference so he did just introduce Anthony Weaver, and then he, you know, he it was like a quick thing. He said his own thing, and then uh, bolted away. So he wasn't fielding questions. Uh, he will speak at the combine, so that's something for next week uh, that potentially we can get that question in. Uh, and there will be a lot of questions to ask, or if not, then we're finding a time during OTAs or something to get the question in. But um, that's why one thing I might point to, or is something Danny Crossman pointed to, maybe going into that last. Uh, week of the season going into the playoffs is that after they had those two back-to-back -back, uh, returns where there was the kick return uh, against Baltimore in the penultimate uh, regular season game and then the, the uh, punt return for a touchdown that turned the Buffalo game uh, upside down was that uh, they were really high in uh, both of those uh, well, coverage areas as far as average return or one of the, one of the the i believe yeah it was average return in each kick return and punt return coverage before those and then large returns obviously send you uh in the other direction so uh it came up at the worst time for uh, crossman's unit uh, at that point and then in other areas Braxton Berrios, solid in the return game, was very reliable with his hands back there. And then uh, Jason Sanders did make uh, strides uh, this season after a couple of, uh, of uh, uneven years before that. So uh, so those are a couple of other things maybe they're, they're pointing to. I remember Ronnie Bradford as a uh, draft pick and obviously didn't last very long uh, here and was Montana's defensive coordinator. Uh, last year and has been uh, in college for, for a while now. Um, I wonder, there's got to be some, besides the Dolphin connection, but there's got to be some connection to some of these coaches, right? I mean, I would imagine there's something there, right? 
Well, I was looking at down at his uh, resume, and then he happened to be oh, he happened to be uh, the Denver Broncos uh, special teams coordinator when uh, Mike McDaniel was interning there uh, as he was uh, finishing up college, uh, gets into coaching, and his first unpaid internship job under Mike Shanahan with the 05 Denver Broncos as Mike McDaniel is an intern. Uh, Ronnie Bradford was a special teams coordinator there. So uh, that's one connection. I was actually going to ask you what happened uh, with, with him with the Dolphins. I wasn't uh, really paying attention. 93. I see he was the, the fourth yeah. round the Dolphins. And then he was with the Broncos by the time the, the season started. So it just didn't make it uh, during, during training camp. Or? We weren't very good drafting in those days. Oh, yeah. That's just, just, kind just, of those days. just those days. Yeah. That's just kind of, uh, I think we're pretty good drafting now. Oh dude. yeah. There's, yeah. There's been some, uh, Last couple of, of, of drafts, it's kind of just they punted on it based on giving away a first-round pick, and then two years ago didn't have any first or second. So first selection yep. was you know, two. For, for Jalen Ramsey, I mean, yeah, you know, not like you're – you know, it's – one a couple of years ago, one of them was for Ramsey, one of them was for Tyreek, right? Tyreek Hill, yeah. So instead yeah. of – well, yeah, Ra yeah, Ramsey uh, actually sent a third-round pick. So it was – The draft for that because – you kind of felt you were closer, so now get some veterans to help you put you over the top. And I kind of understand that it's just unfortunately the, the, the injuries have never worked out the last two years for this damn team. It's just absolutely decimated them. But I, I don't pick on them for that. They can draft nowadays. Dude, they can find people undrafted nowadays. Yeah, have found some undrafted gems. The 21 draft was uh, was very good for this team. Obviously, 2020 is better than Ronnie Bradford. What's up? Cater Kohu is better than Ronnie Bradford. Is better than Ronnie Bradford was in in '93. Yeah, so I got you. He struggled a lot this this second season, so he's going to have to turn it back around. Yeah, I, uh, I think it's, I think it was more about scheme and everything else. Yeah, and I I, I have a feeling with this Weaver guy that he's going to look at players and say, "Okay, this is what I have to do with you. This is what I have to do with you. Okay, now let me design my scheme." to make sure it complements what I have. Instead of, I have my scheme, let me try to fit the, the pieces in my scheme. That's not the way coaching goes. Coaching, like, yeah. I'm sorry? Uh, Go I was going to say, for a guy like Kater Kohu, that's a challenge when you make it as an undrafted guy playing one system, which was a complete 180 from the one you go to, then that's a big uh, switch to go into year two and have to completely change schemes like that. Right, exactly. And and because he's young, you also have to give him some time and he has to grow. He, he, this was only his second year. So, again, we got to kind of slow down here. And, and and plus, he's undrafted from right. Division Two. I mean, give me a freaking break. But, um, yeah, no, I, I, I saw the hire. And, I uh, and again, I just thought of, you know, special teams wise. Now, let, let me let me let, let's have some fun here now, because. One of the things that I uh, talked about last week when it comes to Weaver, there's a couple of positives that could come out of this. One, does he does he carry himself like a head coach or not? Um, as far as his personality-wise, yeah, I, I totally see it. I see him as, as a candidate uh, for it, uh, a leader of men that he could lead a whole unit um, and then I think with, with the Dolphins specifically, I, I believe Mike McDaniel is a guy that would give uh, the keys to the defense to his defensive coordinator. So uh, similar to what he, you know, he let Vic Fangio lead that side of the ball uh, this past season. So I could totally see Anthony Weaver just getting that shot where, okay, you have this side of the ball with this team. And then now this is almost like you're, you're also in interviewing for next year's head coaching job at, with through your performance with how you lead that uh, side of the ball and then just how that transcends into how you can just lead an overall locker room. And worst case scenario, if McDaniel is off the rails and not the answer, you might turn to him. Okay. So that's something there that you might have a young head coach that you're developing there for the future here or somewhere else. Another I, thing I was, here, I was here people say sometimes like um Brian Flores before Mike McDaniel, uh whether he was 
uh, too worried about hiring uh, the guy that would replace him if he hired too good of an assistant coach. Right. So well, I, I like the, the the show of confidence from Mike McDaniel that sure. you know, I mean I'm bringing yeah the guys that we need. This is about uh, bringing the right guys in to to which have the the uh, the optimal uh, coaching staff to lead this group and that he felt he was the right guy for the defense and a guy that is on his way, uh, similar to Mike McDaniel, how he was after one year as an offensive coordinator uh, and the Dolphins were the only team to give him that shot actually in, in the next uh, hiring cycle, but that's on, but potentially on his way to that head coaching rank. Yeah, no, there's no, and listen, he brought in Daryl Bevel who has way more experience than him oh, yeah. also. So he doesn't have an ego in that sense. But the way I look at Weaver, okay, if worse something comes off the rails or whatever, maybe that, that might be one of your options there. Two, this one's kind of the weakest point out of all of them um, because you do weak in Baltimore, but really for how long? I mean, John Harbaugh has replaced so many coaches, and it continues to roll. But for the time being, you did weaken them for a moment because now you do have to replace a good young coach. Um, and, and then, obviously, he understands what he has to do with the players. He said it already with, with, with the cornerback. He understood, oh, no, I got I got to move this guy around. This guy's the ultimate chess piece. And then here's the other thing. I want Patrick Queen in a Dolphin uniform. <laughs> this is a good way to get Patrick Queen next to David Long, you know, because uh, I don't think Jerome Baker is back. You know, I don't think X is back. I don't think, uh, um, what's it called, Wilkins is back. So you're going to free up a lot of money. You're going to have to sign some guys. That, that You can work those contracts and move some of that money. I think Patrick Queen is a guy that Anthony Weaver can help me bring in. So what do you think about all those things? And all right, so uh, I, we we touched on Patrick Queen quickly last time, but uh, have you uh, checked the the contract? I haven't even looked at uh, where he is. Oh, well, he's a uh, he's available this offseason. He's a free agent this offseason. Yeah. yeah. A- okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, th- yeah, that would be uh, an intriguing uh, uh, option there. Trade and sign somebody. That the Dolphins can't do that. They can't go trade and sign somebody. That's not it. It's free agent, and Pat Pat is a free agent, bro. So. Right. He would be perfect in the middle with David Long, bro. Perfect. Hey, you might be formulating that Dolphins defense where from your Christian Wilkins prediction to then uh, to then if it's Patrick Queen go, going in to be that guy with David Long or yeah, with David Long, then uh, you might just uh, be nailing it down. Uh, I think you've got like all the that cap figured out to because it, it would it would pretty much slide right in if you can. If you go ahead and free up without the Christian Wilkins contract on on board next year, uh, which they have, they'll have a, that uh, that franchise tag uh, decision to make now coming up, uh, then yeah, that, I mean that seems to be a fit. And then obviously uh, Weaver was with him in Baltimore, so uh, you know, not coaching his uh, position specifically, but they're in the same building. And as far as uh, as far as Weaver, also to to the point now, people might bring up that well. Uh, uh, John Harbaugh in Baltimore, he was uh, looking at uh, at uh, Orr to be that next defensive coordinator. Uh, but it seemed like that he he really it, it was a situation where he had two great defensive coordinator candidates, and then one was the immediate urgent need that was about to potentially go to a, a, another spot um, with uh, with Mike McDonald going to Seattle. If he was going to end up just snagging him. Uh, over that way so it seemed like that's how it just broke down timing wise and really they were just probably on even footing uh at the end of the day as far as uh candidates to go to that next step so uh just and, sort and of, again, that. The beginning of hardball staff it's very minimal because he does an exceptional job of finding the next guys and the next guys and that which is that's the job of a head coach it's not just building one staff it's continually rebuilding your staff. That's 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 what makes you a great head coach. If you can't do that, not just once, but over and over again, you will not be a good head coach for a long time. It's just going to be really, really hard in order for you to survive. You've got to pick some really good assistant coaches, and John Harbaugh does an awesome job of that, dude, every time. Yeah. man. Yeah. And Big this offseason has been a, a revamping of the defensive side, uh, of the staff. So, 
Um, yeah, well, that was one question I did want to get it, it, into Weaver that uh, shortly after the press conference was how much was it um, you know collaboration between him and Mike McDaniel or if it was just him uh, making these decisions uh, at, sort of with the keys of the defense that uh, he needed some of uh, some new blood, some new guys on that defensive side of the staff to be his assistants for uh, the system. Because a lot of those assistants, they've now coached in, in all the, the different systems, whether it's Boyer and Flores uh, before Fangio, then Fangio, and then now um, like Austin Clark is still around, then he's going to be going through all, the, all of these different uh, staffs. So uh, Campanelli uh, would have been in, in line for that, but, you know, had to, to go ahead and, uh, and move on to Green Bay, um, especially after two off seasons where he didn't get the defensive coordinator uh, promotion once he was uh, interviewing for it. So, you know, understandable there. But then also Ronaldo Hill, Sam Madison uh, getting replaced uh, at their positions. All right. So uh, what are you working on the uh, Sun Sentinel, my man? It is. Uh, yeah. And it's the yeah. off season. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, you know, this week will be, uh, I'm assuming, just a finalization of this coaching staff because I think the Dolphins would want to get all that uh, done by the combine so that they have their guys that are checking in on prospects uh, at different positions. Uh, so I think we'll be wrapping up on that. And then uh, they're just getting ready for the combine uh, next week, getting out there. And, uh, and uh, that's always a, an interesting time where uh, you get the networking that, that goes on. Over there. Are you going to be out there in Indy? Uh, I'm, uh, not yet. I'm not. I'm deciding. Okay. I may go. I may not go. I don't know yet, bro. Um, okay. Yeah, the nights aren't um, as active as uh, they used to be. Okay, um, I only know what they are now, so I, I can't compare. Yeah, uh, NF. Do you think you see a ton of NFL people out there? Not agents. Uh, yeah, I mean, I. Yeah, you see them all around. Now, then also you end up just seeing other sports writers that are doing the same thing as you uh, uh, out and about. But uh, And then you, uh, from my perspective, sometimes I just end up talking to them because those are like friends of mine that I've met from other markets. And then right. you run into them at the Combine. So there, there ends up being some of that too. But then, uh, yeah, you know, uh, good – networking overall as far as the, yeah, the the agents are around and then just uh, yeah the agents are around for sure but the per, the pro people the 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 assistant they coach tend to stay out or stay away from uh from yeah. there a little bit although i mean yeah no i mean but there's some high ranking people that i that i i've seen out uh, uh sometimes yeah, too people. yeah yeah but but mm -hmm. it, it, when i went last year i i noticed that it was the person, you know, and I talked to him, I call him and I'm like, yo, man, you coming out now? Nah, I don't want to be out there. I don't want to be, I don't want people taking pictures of me and alcohol and all that. So, mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, they're a little worried about, they kind of, they're, a lot of them are staying in and then they're just sleeping after they're, they're done with their interviews at it. Cause usually they, they end at 11 at night. That's usually when, when the wolves come out at night, the personnel people come out after 11. That's usually right. the time that they come out. And man, last year, they, uh, I was disappointed with the lack of activity at times. So mm -hmm. that's why I like, you know, if I could just get the information by phone, then I'll just do it that way. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. Although I will say this I, uh, I've, I've got to get to uh, pick up a few more new names because some of my guys have gotten old. Some of my guys are retiring and some of my guys are leaving the business. So. Mm -hmm. That is one thing that's actually changed for me over the years because uh, it's a 30 year cycle, dude. And so, mm. been, you know, some of them have been stepping out. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, shuffling, huh? the, yeah the, actually, for me, uh, I think the East West and the Senior Bowl are better usually for trying to okay. track those kind of people down, you know, because. The, yeah. The, yeah. You know, the yeah, last uh, couple of years up, uh, Perk has been seeing a good wonder about the east west in vegas because that's so spread out that's right, so to track people down in in, in mobile it's easy because there's only a couple there, bars yeah yeah there's two spots right <laughs> you know you're not getting away from me dude yeah. you know? <laughs> so you know if you're out i'm gonna see you if you're not then you're you know you're not but but it's just it's just weird dude i used to be able to sit with six seven assistant coaches and personnel directors and smoke cigars for hours I, I i don't do that anymore that's that they don't do that anymore they don't hang out like that anymore 
smoking yeah. cigars and drinking. And probably I, I, a setup too. Let me tell you something. They get their own table or something instead of being out there with everyone. I'll tell you what we did one night. I didn't do it, but I was part of it. Okay. I was with some assistant coaches. Okay. This is – may God strike me with a lightning bolt right now. Okay. We went and got a, a, a bar that was right there on Daphne. I think it was called The Leaf. Okay. And it was about – a couple assistant coaches, a couple of scouts, no media. I was the only media member there. Okay. They brought in four girls. The place was not for smoking, but we made it a, a smoke show. And then the girls were just giving dances all around. This was no more than seven, eight years ago. Okay. Now. They did this. The only the only people that were there, the people that knew each other. We locked the doors. Boom. These guys were drinking. They were getting their dances, talking bullshit. Nobody ever could see it. You know what I mean? But that was in Mobile. And that is two blocks away from from the from the main hotel we were at. OK, so we were right there, right around the corner. But again, it was just a, a private thing. You know what I mean? But nowadays. These guys will go out less and less and less because they don't want to get caught with a drink in their hand, with a with a cigar or anything like. Man, I used to go to Sammy's in Mobile. Now that's been closed for a few years, but I could go to Sammy's back in the day. And now I'm talking. Now I'm talking 15, 20, 25 years ago, and I could talk to an assistant coach, a personnel director, a college director of scouting. And we're in the middle of a strip club, okay? And they're getting dances, and they're going back in the champagne room with one or two girls. I could tell you about head coaches that were doing that and all that. Not that I would ever say it publicly. I, I can't. Yeah, not, no not names. Would, yeah, we don't have to say names. No, no, I'm, I would never say any names. But my point is, that's how much it's changed. That's how much it's changed. That these guys just don't even go out nearly as much. That's why I ask you, when you were out, did you see a lot of, you know, personnel directors and scouts and, and people like that? And it's really hard to find, dude, because I used to go to the Olive and I could hang out there and there'd be 10, 15 different personnel people smoking cigars. Now they won't even go out to just smoke cigars. It's the yeah. weird. I used to I used to smoke a cigar with Tom Condon every year. Every year, Tom Condon and I would sit there at the Olive and bullshit for three hours and smoke a cigar. I would do it, by the way, I, I used to do it uh, at the Olive, no no dirty places, with Ron Rivera all the time. Hmm. And then he became a head coach, and then now, and then Ron. Now I may be able to bother Ron now that he's not a head coach. Oh. When he became a head coach, he didn't hang out anymore. When he was an assistant, he and I used to hang out all the time at the Combine and sit there and talk for a couple of hours. You know, that that's the kind of shit that I miss, dude. Mm -hmm that I'm, I'm just not able to do nearly as much because they're not willing to do it in public. Yeah. No, I get it. And uh, it's a byproduct of the smartphone era, of the social media era. And, uh, yeah, you know, us media members that sort of, you know, know what's going on and know how to respect people's time and, and, and that, that they're making one – they're making a public appearance or anything. Uh, we're not going to be out there doing that like us reporters, but um, you never know what fans are just going to be out there, recognize a face and go just, you know, snapping pics of someone. So I get it. I think a lot of them probably do want to stay in. And then they got an early morning, maybe the next day with interviews. And uh, cause I mean, those are some long days of the com. I mean, for, for myself as a writer, I mean, you get up early for uh, prospect uh, media interviews that they do uh, that start at 8 a.m. Uh, and then uh, you're trying to be out uh, to, to meet people and see um, the team personnel when they're getting out from scouting guys after running drills, uh, you know, deep into the you know, early morning, basically. So those end up being some really long days for, for anyone. So I get it when people are just trying to just get their sleep because uh, they got a big work day the next day anyway or just trying to avoid the crowds, avoid – all the hassle of anything that uh, could come up, any negative implications from 
uh, just being out or just if they are out, maybe they're getting their own private uh, area, uh, just somewhere, uh, get their own table. So they're at their own table instead of just out with the, uh, with the crowd. So uh, a bunch of different factors. So I have really, I don't really have the past to compare it to. I just have last couple that what, so now I'm going on my third combine. So that's really just, I've only seen, we know right. what it is now. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I can't compare it to, oh man, the old days were, were a lot better if uh, from that perspective. Oh, the old days were a hell of a lot better, yes. <laughs> I still yeah. see the Dallas Cowboys bus. I know that's legendary from yeah, everything I've always, heard. Yeah, yeah. Every time, it's always there. Yeah, I uh, I have a legendary Dallas Cowboys story I'll tell you one day. Okay. <laughs> that, that is not for, for the air? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. No. Not at all. Yeah. One day I'll tell you that uh, that story when we're alone somewhere. All right. I hope maybe it's an indie. Maybe it's an indie in a couple weeks. Maybe, maybe. But uh, that one will trip you out if I tell you that story. That's okay. for sure. But anyway, yeah, the the stuff that happens on the road, woo, doggy man, and the stuff that used to happen on the road <laughs> is, is the stuff of uh, of legends uh, back in the day. So yeah, that was uh, that was fun. But again, it was great because for information purposes. God, it was it was the golden era, <laughs> you know. At least for me, it was the golden era, in that sense. Now, phones and everything else and social media just ruined so much, and and guys have to kind of change their ways, which is uh, which is a shame, unfortunately. All right, follow him on Twitter at David Ferronis underscore, and catch his work there at the South Florida Sun Sentinel. David, as always, thank you, my brother. Yes, Enjoy sir. your week, my friend. Appreciate sir, you. Talk. Got it. There you go. David Ferronis getting it done. Welton Realm. Jeff Welt knows how to get it done. Daniel Realm knows how to rock it out, baby. 954-966-4646. So let me tell you, we're dealing with a personal injury, bankruptcy, commercial litigation, homeowner property damage, business owner claims, condo damage, criminal defense. Please call Welt and Realm. And by the way, the consultation is completely free. They've got an office in Hollywood, but it doesn't matter where you live. You can call. It's a consultation that's free. You can do a lot of it by phone. Even one of our listeners in Orlando hired Welton Realm. 954-966-4646. They brought Progressive to their knees for us, and it was amazing. So that's why I'm telling you, you call Jeff Welt. He knows how to get it done. 954-966-4646. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.